In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the control panel you'll find within .NET Nuke 7. Now, in order to access the control panel, you do need to be logged in. And I'm currently logged in with the host or the super user account for this .NET Nuke 7 installation. Now, the control panel is found at the very top of the screen. You can see the dark black line going all the way across the width of the browser. That is the control panel in DNN 7. Now, from within the control panel, you'll find the .NET Nuke logo. And if there was an update available to your installation of .NET Nuke, you would find a message there or a graphic there that would tell you there's an update available. To the right of that logo, you'll find the admin menu. Now, the admin menu has been around in .NET Nuke for quite a while. Within .NET Nuke 7, it has changed along with the host menu and the way the information is displayed. When you mouse over the admin menu, you'll find a menu that appears down below. Within that menu, you'll find three tabs going down the left side. First tab is sort of basic settings. The second tab is more advanced settings. And the third tab is actually a bookmark tab. You'll notice if you click on the bookmark tab, it is currently empty. Well, that allows you to go through and apply bookmarks to that tab. And you can choose which different pages within the admin menu you want to bookmark. Now, within the basic area or the common area of the admin menu, you'll find things like the event viewer, the file manager, recycle bin, managing pages, site settings, and even users and security roles. Within the advanced settings, you'll find more advanced options such as site redirection management, the taxonomy, the vendors, and even the language management. So what we can do is within any of those menu items, we can click on the little bookmark icon to the left of the menu item, and that will add that item to our bookmarks. Now these bookmarks are personalized, and they are for the admin or the host menu respectively. So if we go ahead and we mouse over the host menu in the control panel, we'll find the same three tabs. But on those tabs, we have different settings available to us. For common settings for a host or a super user, we find things like the dashboard, the ability to manage extensions, another file manager, which allows us to manage the files from a super, or a a super user or a host perspective, software and documentation, and other options. From the advanced settings, we find information on activating our professional edition license, application integrity, the configuration manager, and other options there for super user or host accounts. And then once again, we have that bookmark tab. Now to the right of the host menu, you'll find a tools option. Now the tools option provides you a couple of shortcuts. We have an option here to upload a file, so it's a shortcut into the file manager. When we're logged in as our host or a super user account, we will also see a clear cache, a recycle application pool, and a switch sites option. Now, clear cache will clear the memory cache on the server for the website. The recycle application pool will cause the website to restart. And then switch sites allows us to switch between different websites or portals within our .NET Nuke installation if we have multiple sites running out of the same installation. To the right of the tools menu, we'll find the help option. From here, we have a link to the online help. We also have a link to the getting started page, which you likely saw when you first installed your .NET Nuke 7 website. To the right of the help menu, we have the ability to start adding modules to a .NET Nuke page. Now, in order to add a module to the page, we're going to use one of the add or options for add new or add existing. We can also find more modules. And we'll cover adding modules to a page in other videos in the .NET Nuke video library. Now to the right of the modules menu, we have a pages menu. This allows us to create a page, to copy a page, or even to import content onto the current page. To the right of pages is a users option. The users option allows us to add a user, to navigate to the user accounts page, or to navigate to the manage roles or the security roles page. Now, on the very far right corner of the control panel, we'll find an edit page menu. Now, the edit page menu allows us to switch into edit mode for the current page. We would do that by clicking on the blue button. That will reload the page in edit mode. Now, when we're logged in in edit mode, we find that we have action menus for each of the modules on the page, in which we can go through and start to manage that content. 
Also under the edit page option, we have a stay in edit mode option, which means you will stay in edit mode when you navigate to other pages on the website. Otherwise, if you leave this current page, you'll go back into what's the view mode when you don't have the edit mode checked or selected. By checking the box stay in edit mode, it'll keep you in edit mode as you navigate from page to page. There's also a view in layout mode option, which will allow you to view the page in layout mode, which hides the content of the modules, but displays the action menus for the modules, and it also displays the panes available within the skin that is applied to the current website. The panes are the locations where you can move modules on a page. After those options, we have the ability to preview what the site looks like from a mobile perspective. We can navigate directly to the page settings, page appearance, or page permissions. We also have an export and a delete page option here within the edit menu. Now when you're done editing a page, you can go ahead and click on close edit mode, and that will take you back into the view mode for the current page. That's a brief introduction to the control panel found within .NET Nuke 7.